Okay, I think we can start. Hi everyone, welcome to the 11th session of the Triple Open Science Training Series. And today we'll be dedicated to the Go Triple Pundit Annotation Tour. So just a word about the next event, which will be on the 21st of June. And uh, Professor Katerina Zganga will talk to us about copyright and academia in the digital era. Uh, now, just a bit of information on today. So I've started the recording of the session. So if you don't want to be recorded, please uh, take off the camera. And uh, the recording will be made available on the YouTube channel of the Triple Project after the event. We will also put the materials on the project's website. So you can see the link here. And uh, we will have a dedicated time for questions and answers at the end of the session. If you wish to put your questions in the chat, I will collect them and present them to the speakers um, at the end. Now, last thing, we use a Mentimeter tool at the end of the training to collect your feedback. So if you don't mind to stay until the last minute, it would be very useful for us. And I'll get back to this at the end. Now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our speakers for today, so Tiziana Lombardo, Sona Araste, and Giulia Andreini. Tiziana is an ICT enthusiast and has a background in uh, humanities. She's a project manager at Net7 and has experience in the design and management of uh, research and innovation projects in which ICTs provide solutions to different uh, challenges uh, in different domains. About Sona, she's written her PhD thesis uh, in German philology at the University of Munster. And she's currently working at the Max Weber Foundation uh, and leading work package eight of the triple project on communication and dissemination. Finally, Julia is a user experience designer and the project manager at Net7. And he has been working on Pundit since 2014. Today, they'll focus on the futures of Pundit and its relevance for the SSH context. Uh, there will also be uh, a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to use Pundit from GoTriple. Now, I think I'll stop sharing my screen and I can leave the floor to Tiziana. And welcome, Tiziana. Okay, I start sharing my screen. Thank you. Okay, before we go into uh, the core part of this uh, training, I wanted to share with you some uh, uh, key concepts because uh, especially I thought that they were useful, especially for those who are new to this training series and new uh, to the triple project. So uh, the title of this training is Go Triple Pandit uh, Annotation Tool. So let's start uh, explaining what is Go Triple. Go Triple is uh, a platform developed within a project uh, funded by the European Union called Triple. It's going to be the discovery service of Operas, which is the research infrastructure supporting open scholarly communication in social science and humanities. And it's going to be designed to be integrated um, into the European Open Science Cloud, uh, providing, uh, therefore, uh, services specifically for the SSH community. So as I said, GoTriple is going to be a platform, um, more precisely, a multilingual discovery solution that uh, wants to act as a central access point for discovery research. There is a noise for discovering research artifacts, uh, from publications to research profilers. Uh, we are going to harvest automatically from aggregators different sources, semantically reach them and link them through the GoTriple platform so that you can uh, uh, access uh, all uh, uh, the, the relevant uh, um, data that, mm, that comes under the wide umbrella domain of SSH. The GoTriple platform will also have some services and tools that will make your uh, uh, research activity um, more powerful. And one of these is uh, the Pandit Annotation tool. 
What do we mean for web annotation? Here in this slide, you can see uh, the definition provided by the W3C Web Annotation Working Group. In a very few words, this can be translated in the, you have to think to notes that you do in uh, paper and pen on books applied to web objects. So it's the act of uh, attaching data to some other piece of data. The Pandit annotation tool is, uh, um, so is a web annotation system, but is it also enriched and powered by semantic technologies? What does this mean? It means that your annotation becomes more expressive because you can not only comment, highlight or tag uh, something, but also link uh, fully expressed uh, concepts. So adding some semantic relations to it. Here, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, once you have discovered um, your source, uh, uh, your relevant source through the GoTeople platform, you can uh, decide to annotate your uh, document. Therefore, you can uh, not only add the comment and tag, the both, but also adding your, these semantic relations as shown in this uh, slide here. What's next? Uh, the Pandit is an evolving uh, tool, so uh, it's going to be uh, further enhanced in the upcoming uh, months. Uh, the first uh, uh, enhancement will be a tire integration with the GoTriple platform, allowing a federation of user accounts among the platforms, and also allowing uh, to receive notification from Pandit in your MyGoTriple space. It will advance uh, uh, in supporting semantics, uh, adding a configurable ontology manager, and also will support better collaboration and teamwork by allowing the sharing uh, of notebooks. It advances in its uh, interoperability and uh, uh, will be also available as a self-standing service in the EOSC marketplace. Now I'm going to leave the floor to my colleague Sona, who is going to show you a hands-on uh, hands uh, experience uh, in using Pandit. Thank you so much, Tiziana. I'm gonna let you. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen then. Okay, and before I go into detail annotating stuff on the internet, um, I just have to say a few words about what I'm actually annotating right now. So I took an example from my PhD thesis that um, I have written on populist and nationalistic texts from the late 19th and early 20th century. And one thing about these texts is you can't buy them anymore, which I have to say is probably for the better. Um, but it is one reason you can view them as a PDF on the internet without any problems. And um, what I will do is I will guide you through a little book with 640 pages um, and show you how annotating is more easily or it was more easily to me via Pandit um, than printing everything out and annotating it via hand. Um, about the book itself, it is called Heligenlei and it's from a German author called Gustav Frenzen. No one knows anymore, again, thankfully. Um, and explaining what happens in this book is relevant to the annotations I'm gonna well, annotate. So I'm, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview um, the book is about a kid that grows up in northern Germany. And um, if you see the painful expression on my face, it's because the book is painful to read because it's so bad. Um, <laughs> this kid grows up to be a priest and um, it has an epiphany. And the epiphany is that Jesus truthfully walked the floors of northern Germany. So um, a large part of the book, about 150 pages, is basically um, a report or a biography of Jesus who is walking through northern Germany. So um, let's annotate. I'll start by clicking on the pundit button right here. And I should have done this before because it takes some time, I'm sorry. Or maybe I should have just chosen a book that has less pages.
so the usual article you'll open, it will be faster. Okay, so here's the first thing that's really handy. It remembers the page I was on when I last used Pundit. And since you can see this is Gothic print, it's not machine readable, but I can highlight it anyway. So we're gonna just do that, we'll highlight it. So this is the beginning of the um, Jesus biography, so to say. And um, let's just have a little comment on it. So I'll just comment and I'll say um, something like Jesus just biography is starting okay and then you can see this is the notebook the note was taken in um, unfortunately I named it test one so let, let's have another notebook by I'll create another by clicking on your notebooks on notebooks and then new notebook. And just let's name it, Jesus is wandering through places he has never been at. Okay. So I can go back to this. Yeah. Sorry, I just have to put the menu over there. Okay, so if I do another annotation, something like this, I can highlight it again. And I can change the notebook. Okay. I didn't save it, I'm sorry. So Jesus is wandering through places, great. Okay, so now we know that don't, uh, we, we want not only to have uh, <clears throat> something highlighted, but we want to have a comment or a tag. So let's tag it. So it's a nationalistic text. Okay, it's uh, about Jesus, it's in German. So, that. And maybe we want to insert a link, for example, to the uh, to the book. Yeah. So we can insert the link. Okay, great. But now you may be wondering why is Jesus walking through Northern Germany? And then you'll find out after doing a bit of research, it is not that uncommon that Jesus was wandering through places, which is uh, why we named the notebook, Jesus is wandering through places. So there is, for example, um, a French text that is called uh, Vie de Jesus, and it was a bestseller in the 19th century. So maybe we want to just have a quick note on how this is connected to Christian nationalism in Germany. So what we can do, I obviously saved the website in the folder pundit, as you can see. Um, I don't want to read the whole text, so I don't have to download the PDF. But what I can do is basically activate pundit again, and then highlight it again, or add a semantic annotation. So I'll just put is related to Illegal Lie, for example. So the book I was just annotating, and I'll save it. 
Okay. So then you might want to ask, hmm, is French and German the only languages that work with these kind of Jesus biographies? Of course it's not. So I found another example of Jesus, uh, Jesus wandering through Northern Europe, um, which is basically a text that roughly translates to um, Jesus in the Netherlands. And I can do the same for that. So I'll just, again, need to activate funded. Add a semantic annotation. Um, but now I have two objects, right? So I'll just add another relation. Again, we can add tags, so nationalistic. Um, Okay, and if we now go to our notebook, Jesus is wandering the place. Yes, no, okay, obviously now he has saved that, but we won't go to that. So we'll see all of that. Yeah, and we can access every single page. And for example, the Hilling Live page will point us right to the book. Okay, but we can um, also go to the text itself. Um, and we can visit all the other sites I marked. What we can do as well, and this is kind of the beauty of Punnet, especially as um, you, if, if you are working with several formats of text, which for example, I'm doing, I'm not only working with PDFs or with uh, pages that lead to PDFs, but I'm also working, for example, with newspaper articles. Um, so basically something like this, okay. I want to connect it to a current event. Um, for example, what is happening in the US right now? So Christian nationalism, can there be a connection? And I just want to make a quick note on it. It's obviously um, a newspaper article. So again, activate funded, mark it, and then tag, comment, highlight. I'll add a semantic annotation. Um, Okay. So if I go back to my notebook, I can see all of that is written down here and I can filter these annotations. Okay, now <clears throat> I basically <clears throat> only related things to another thing, but I could also say, okay, the authors, uh, the same one, if I have several articles of one author, um, I can search via annotation tags. I can search via, <coughs> I'm sorry, via annotation types. I can look for the web pages. Um, I can have a closer look at the date. And um, the other beautiful thing you can do is you can export the data. So for me, it would always be docs. So I'll just do that to have an example. And then I have all my notes in one document with the data we have been created on. I mean, obviously this, as I said, it's Gothic print, so it's not machine readable, um, but you could add comments for that. And um, you have all the information in one document. So this is quite nice, but again, I'm biased. So sorry for that. <laughs> um, yeah. So that would basically be the way I use Pundit. I use it as a way to um, connect the information I have. I use it as a way to highlight uh, things in my web browser. I otherwise have to print out or annotate via a PDF too. So this is quite nice. Um, and now I would stop and give the floor to Julio who can explain in more detail what I was doing and probably in a more structured way as well. Thank you, Sana. That, that was amazing to see a real use case of Pandit. And 
to be completely transparent, when I saw that you were opening a 600 PDF page, I was kind of trembling, you know, and, and getting a bit paranoid because I think I've never tested with such a large PDF, but it worked. So that was a really good uh, stress test to see. And so I'm going to share you my screen and Okay, do you see my screen? Yeah, okay. Okay, so thank you. Uh, I think Tiziana and Svana already provide uh, a lot of information about Pandit. And what I want to do to add a little bit on what they presented is to show you a little bit more in detail how to use Pandit, uh, how simple it's to you, it is to use Pandit, even if probably what Sona was showing was already clear. And so the goal of the session, yeah, is showing how to use Pandit and hopefully to have some of you start using it uh, today. So to recap a bit, what is Pandit? And Pandit is a web annotation tool. So the, the original idea of Pandit was to provide a tool that allows you to annotate web pages. So any HTML and web page that you can browse on your browser, let's take uh, Google Chrome, give the possibility to annotate uh, this web page. Uh, following the same uh, paradigm that we are used to when we are annotating text on paper, okay? I, I think most of us, of every, all of us uh, have probably in the past added notes and highlighted text on papers, on a book or printed paper or something uh, material. And we wanted to bring that uh, paradigm on the web. And so what types of annotations can you do? Sona was already showing it. You can highlight parts of text. You can add tags to those parts of text. You can leave comment and you cre can create semantic annotations. And in the last release of Pandit, we also added the possibility as, as shown by Sana to annotate PDF documents. And, and today we can also say very large PDF documents. And, and this is something very new for Pandit, but it was something that was asked uh, by a lot of uh, people using Pandit because it's a very common use case for it to, to have the necessity to annotate PDFs. Uh, if you want to use Pandit, there are three different ways, but the most simple way to use Pandit is by using the Chrome extension. I will show you in a minute how to use it, how to install it and how to use it. And then there are a couple of other ways, which might be maybe a more technical ways. Uh, another way is what we call feed the pundit, which allows to uh, add the pundit on any page without the need of having the Chrome extension. And the other way is the WordPress plugin. So we also have a WordPress plugin that you can add to your WordPress uh, website and uh, allows to uh, add the pundit to the pages that you want inside your uh, WordPress website. Uh, we didn't publish the plugin yet uh, because we were kind of very busy with all the stuff. Uh, but in the case that you need to do, you want to give it a try and use the WordPress plugin, of course, it's completely free. Just drop us a line and we will send it to you so you can start using it on your uh, website, WordPress website. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit how to register and start using Pandit. Um, okay, first thing that you have to do is to install the Chrome extension. Okay, so uh, if you go on Google and search for Pandit annotator, you probably have as your first result the Chrome extension. Okay, if not, may, maybe you search Pandit annotator extension, something like that and you will land on this page. This is the, the Chrome Web Store, so the, the official uh, Google Chrome uh, page where, where you find all the, all the Chrome extension. 
And this is the official Pandit Annotator Chrome extension. So I will remove it now from my browser. So you, you find yourself in this situation, Pandit Annotator, uh, you can read something here and there, and there is this Add to Chrome button. Okay, so you click on Add to Chrome, click on Add Extension, and a few seconds, and the, um, the extension is there. So you're already installed Pandit, just a couple of clicks. And he, as you can see here, I have a lot of extensions, maybe too, much, too many. Uh, if you click here on this icon, you see there is the full list of my extensions here. You see there is also Pandit annotator. And if I click on the pin icon, okay, now the, the, the Pandit extension icon is pinned here at the top of my Chrome, Google Chrome. And I usually also like to have it in first position. You just can take it and drag it and you have it there. Okay, so Pandit Annotator on Google, you will reach the Chrome extension page, add it to Chrome, and you have Pandit on your computer. You're ready to use it. And how to proceed? Let's start with a, with a page to see how you can start using it. Uh, let's see you are on a web page and you say, okay, I want to highlight some text because this is interesting. I want to have it for later for my research work or just for my personal interest. And so you just click on the Pandit icon. And what you see is happening here, top right, you have this Pandit icon showing, you click on it and you have the Pandit sidebar opening. Uh, I will log out. So let's say that the first time you land on this page, you will probably find yourself in this situation. Okay, so you open Pandit and you can log in or register. Let's say it's the first time you use Pandit and you click on register. This registration model shows up. There are four ways that you can register to Pandit. We really kind of focused on that to try to make it simple. As, as simple as possible. So you can register with your email and password. So you insert name, last name, email, password, and click on register now. You can register with Google, you can register with Facebook, and you can register with EGI. So four ways to register. Uh, the two ways that we recommend, which we think from, from the user experience perspective are the easiest one is just use your, your email and password or your Google account, okay? We suggest you to pick one of, of these two ways to register. I'm not going to register now because I already have an account. So I will click on login and I will add my data here. And that's it, I mean. Okay, so at this point, what you can do with Pandit. Sana was already showing it, so, but I will show you again so you, you can see it, how easy it is. So first thing you want to do, and you already see that happen here. This is a page I was with me and my colleague, we were kind of highlighting some stuff here and there. So you can select part of text, and you maybe want to highlight that. Very simple, click highlight and actually automatically the highlight is created. Okay, so you can go through the text and do all your highlights like this. And the use case for this can be many different use case. Okay, so when I was showing our own use case, I personally have different uh, situations where I use Pandit. Sometimes I read a text, I, I just want to go back and, and, and I need the highlights just to visually scan the text, maybe later, the day later, visually scan the text and see the yellow parts which I want to focus on. So I, the way I would use a normal highlight on a piece of paper, sometimes maybe I highlight and comment 
pieces of text to to then download the, the word version later or the JSON version later. So there are many different use cases. In some cases, for example, we use it with clients when we make the review of our websites and we are maybe showing the website to one of our clients and we open fund it and we take notes directly on the website if there is something that we must change or there are some problems. So this is the highlight, very straightforward. And as Sona was showing, then maybe you want to add a, a tag. So you click on tag and you say, okay, this is about poetry. And there you go. And you save tags and there you are. And then you can also leave a comment so same pattern, you select the text, you select comment, and you leave your comment. This is interesting. You can here make some formatting of your comment, and also you can also select the tag, and you save your comment, and you got it here, okay? And the third thing, that you, the fourth thing that you can do is to create um semantic annotation okay so let's open another text and let's see how semantic annotation works so this is a pdf okay smaller pdf and you open pound it and there you go Okay, and so maybe you want to create, I don't know, uh, a semantic annotation about something. I don't know, maybe mystics here. And you create a semantic annotation and maybe you want to create a relation with, I don't know, not, not, not the, the best, but the, basketball team but maybe mysticism on wikipedia okay you got a, a url or a uri you want to be the relation to okay and so mystics and you select a predicate is related to mysticism okay and you save it and there you go you what you did in this moment is that you created a semantic annotation so the part of the text that you, that you selected is the subject. You selected this uh, predicate is related to, and the object is a text, but in this case is a URL to the Wikipedia page. And as Sona was showing, you can also create uh, anno semantic annotations with more than one triple. So let me see, maybe I created one somewhere around here. No, but we can create one. I don't know, for example, we, we see carnival here and we want to create an annotation, a semantic annotation related to carnival. Maybe we go on the Wikipedia page. So I copy the URL of the Wikipedia page. I go here and card, the text carnival identifies the carnival in Wikipedia, and maybe I can also add a re another relation, so another triple here, and maybe it's related to, and I don't know, I could even pick a picture, for example. And let me open the picture. And uh, yeah, that depicts carnival, I would say, and there we go. And so what I'm doing here is selecting the text carnival in the text and create two semant a semantic annotation with two triples with different predicates and that points to different URIs in this case. But as Shana was, was, was showing, you can also add here your own text. Uh, this is important because this is a very, this is a very uh, unique to fund it to allow to make this kind of semantic relation. Uh, we are now working to add the possibility to add a vocabulary here. Okay, so instead of 
having to add your text or your URI, as I did, copy and paste, you will have the possibility to select a term from a vocabulary. Okay, we'll probably start by adding DBpedia or Wikidata, but we will provide the possibility to plug in any uh, vocabulary that is needed here. That's, that's what we already had in the previous version of Pandit. And as you can see, I created the annotation and now it's here, I see it on, on, on the right. So Carnival identifies the URL of Carnival in Wikipedia and is related to this image of the Carnival. So these are the, um, the, the four types of annotations that you can uh, create in Pandit. And there are a bunch of few other things that you can do. It's, and this is especially useful if you're maybe working in a team, you are working in a, in a school, you are teaching and you want to make a more kind of collaborative annotation work. You want to collaborate on a text. As you can see here on the right, what, this is what we call the sidebar of Pandit is where you have the, the details of all, all the annotations. You can see here, there are some icons below. Okay, the, the first icon allows you to leave a comment to the annotation. So I can leave a comment to a previously created annotation And it's like starting a discussion thread, which is re originally related to a part of the text in the page. And starting from that, we can start a discussion about that. And also you can like, dislike, and report this uh, annotation and the comments as well. So this is a way to interact uh, together with other people on the text. This can be useful for schools, for example, maybe the teacher could go and ask students to make a text analysis in, over there and then come and leave some comments and provide some guide, guidance to the, to the students. And so these are uh, what we call the, the, the social uh, interactions that are um, available on Pandit. This is all for what concerns the types of annotations that you can create. So you can highlight, uh, tag, comment, and create semantic annotations, and then make this social interaction related to, to the annotations. Another important thing that I would like to show you is where are uh, all these annotations going? Where are all these annotations stored? And Sana was already showing this. Uh, we, we organize annotations in notebooks. We call them notebooks. Think of, they are like folders, more or less. So, but we, we call them notebooks. And it is a way to organize your annotations because uh, what, when you start using Pandit, you usually start producing a lot of annotations and that you need at a later stage to be able to work with your annotations and organize them. So if you, you see here, top right, there is this notebook icon here, and it opens a little window with some details about the, your notebooks. You see at the moment, my current notebook is this startup and growth notebook, which is public, and I can change my current notebook. Okay, so my current notebook is where my annotations are automatically inserted when, I am doing, when I'm doing my annotations. Okay, when I do an highlight, it's automatically sent to my current notebook. And of course, I can change my current notebook. I come here and let's say I want to switch to the Go Triple Demo notebook and is we is switched. Okay, now if I create a new highlight, it, this will go in the triple demo notebook. Another thing is you can see here is the notebook is public and I can switch it to private. Okay, what is the difference between public 
and private notebook. All the annotations which are in the public notebook are visible to all the Pandit users. Okay, so if I add an annotation in a public notebook and Sona comes in and open Pandit, she can see my annotation. Okay, while if I want to work on my own annotations and I don't want to reveal what I'm doing to the world, I can switch the notebook to private. And then is it? I will be the only person which will be uh, will be able to see the annotations in the notebook. So there are two ways that you can store uh, your annotations. Public notebooks, everybody will see the annotations. Everybody with Pandit will see the annotations. And private notebook, only the people, you can only see your own annotations in that notebook. And as you can see, the, the, the private notebooks have this uh, kind of lock locker icon here, small. And but let me switch this one to public. And one thing that we are working on that is coming in the next weeks or months is the possibility to have shared notebooks. So not just public and private, but also notebooks that are shared among a team. And that and all the notifi and all the annotations there are visible to the team, which can interact on those annotations. So this is something we are currently working on. Um, as you can see, there is also the possibility to move the annotations from one notebook to another. So, for example, I was creating this annotation before here, and. I created in, in it in the wrong notebook. So I want to move it to another notebook. I click here on this icon, so change notebook. And here I can select the, the right notebook. So go triple demo and I'm done. It's, it's moved to the right notebook. So this happens to me a bit often, to be honest. I create some annotations and, and then I, 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 I realize, oh, they're in the wrong notebook. And so I go there and change the notebook of the, of the annotations. And looking at, looking at this uh, drop-down menu that you find here, there are other actions that also Sona was already showing. You can modify the annotations that you created. You can add comment, you can add semantic, you can add tags, and of course you can delete the annotation. Okay, so uh, these are the, the things that you can do on your previously uh, created annotations. Uh, another thing that you can do and clicking on this little icon here is you can share your annotation. Okay, because each annotation has its own uh, link, its own URL. And so now I click here and I click on copy link. And I, if I open a new web page and paste the link here, there is the public version of this annotation. This can be shared. You can take it and share it to your colleagues or share it on, on Twitter or Mattermost, Slack or whenever you want. And you have all the information about the annotation. So the author, the date, the notebook, the selected text, and the regional page. And of course, this is visible only if the annotation is in a public notebook. Otherwise, this is not possible, of course, because it means you don't want your annotation to be public. Uh, another interesting thing here that you can see is that there is this view, JSON version. Here, I will show it to you here. So this is the public view of the annotation and you can also view the JSON version. So this is the original data of the annotation in a standard format, which is the W3C Web Annotation Group standard format. So this is an interoperable format of the annotation that you can maybe reuse for for your own project or your own application. And we will come back to this in, in a while. Let's go back to a page. And oh, here also I put this one in the wrong notebook. So let me, yeah, change the notebook. 
the last thing I would like to show you is, uh, this is a tool that is used across the web, okay? So that when happens that you're maybe kind of investigating a topic or doing your research or just for your personal interest, you usually go to different pages and you create annotations on different web pages. And it's very difficult to remember at a certain point the pages that you were <clears throat> annotating. I would say it's almost impossible, especially when you start have large numbers of annotations. And so uh, as, John, as Sona was showing, there is this uh, application, which is the Pandit app, is a central application where you can review all the work that you have done. You annotate across the web, across your documents, across PDFs, and this is the central point where you can come back and review all the work that you have done. Here you will find the the notebook organization. So all the annotations are organized in notebooks. You can see I have uh, some notebooks, three pages of notebooks. So a lot of notebooks, to be honest. And you can go inside the notebook and you will see all your annotations, more or less with the same interface that, that you saw on the Pandit annotator. So you kind of more or less recognize your work. And here you have all the annotations that you did. And what you can do, let's make an example. Uh, for example, me being a UX designer, I have this UX design notebook, which has kind of almost to, to uh, hundred of annotations. It's a lot of stuff in here. So pages and pages of annotations. I've been using this for, for years now. And so maybe I can go here and I'm interested in interviews. And maybe I, I, I can filter, I can add a filter and now I'm filtering all the annotations with the text interview. Okay, and so from 200 annotations, now I'm looking at six annotations. So. I've been annotating across the web. I honestly don't remember all the pages that I annotated, which is impossible because it's years now. I come back to my app, a Pandit app. I go in my notebook and I filter the annotations using the interview. And so here I have six annotations coming from many different pages. And maybe I can further filter, maybe looking for the tag. And so maybe I'm interested in UX research. So interviews related to UX research. And here I am. So this is a, a page from a website about uh, user experience research, interviews, user experience research. I see the text that I was highlighting and I also see the comment that I have. So this was very useful, you know, starting from the chaos of web and all the annotations that I did around, go here, go in the notebook, filter and find one annotation that I was looking for. And then I can go back to the page, read the article again, launch Pandit again, and also go back to it, the annotation that I did. And so maybe I remember what I was reading. I remember why I was annotating that. And I'm back to the, the topic that I was studying. Uh, yeah, this was actually in January, so sometimes has passed. And the last thing I would like to show you is uh, the export feature. And let's go in this Go Triple Demo Notebook. Uh, you can export as an Excel file. You can export as an ODT, as a doc document, and I, uh, I, sorry, I was missing the chat. Maybe I, I go back and, and, and have a look in a few minutes. And you can export as JSON-LD. Okay, so if you click on JSON-LD, what is this? This is the all the annotations inside that notebook in the star, standard JSON-LD format, in the standard interoperable 
format uh, of WP3C, the Web Annotation Working Group. And so this is, this is actually kind of a public endpoint which can be used if you want to build your own application. Maybe you want to build the visualization and NLP tool or kind of a distant reading tool. You can have a team uh, working on the notebooks, take the, the URLs of the notebooks, which export data in JSON-LD, and you can take this data and do whatever you want with that. And the cool thing is that if I keep adding annotations here and I update the URL, I have the new uh, annotations there. So this is standard, interoperable, and you are really uh, ready to reuse it for your own project. Um, I think it's more or less everything. I hope it was you were able to understand uh, something of what I said. I also would like to share this this page that I was using as a um, track for for this session. So it's a public page. And I don't know, I, it's all for me. I hope it was clear and I hope some of you will start using Pandit today. And last thing that I forgot to say is that it's free. It's there. The Chrome extension is completely free. You can just install it and start using. So that's it on my side. I don't know, Lottie, what's the next uh, step? Thanks a lot, Giulio. It was very, very clear. And so on, and Tiziana. Uh, there are a lot of questions in the chat. I don't know how you wish to proceed. Do you want me to read them to you starting from the beginning or do you wish to look at the chat and answer? For example, Julio, you have the very last questions addressed more to you. Tell me how you wish to proceed. Uh, maybe we can start from the top, not to yeah. forget uh, any exactly. question. I think so as well. Okay, maybe. so. Tell me. A lot, maybe you, you can yeah. drive us to the questions. Yes, exactly. So the first question was from Robert during, during Sona's presentation. And uh, he was asking, what app are you using? And to Sona, I think it was the link to the app you were using, to the Pandit app. Am I right, Robert? Yes, well, um... He started off with um, clicking some buttons and it wasn't clear um, what environment you were in or, or where these buttons came from. So um, the answer's been, or the question's been answered. All right, sorry. Yes, I should have explained that, yeah. Oh, I was muted, thank you. Then the second question was for Sona from Agnieszka. Uh, which other tools do you combine with Pundit to write your PhD thesis? Which text editor, et cetera? Yeah, it's basically very, it's, it's a bit embarrassing and also boring because I only used Word um, because uh, the German philology in Münster is very traditional. And since you have to share texts with your supervisor all the time and everyone uses Word, you basically just use Word. And I did that as well. And what I wanted to show you and what I apparently did not show you, what uh, Sai mentioned in the chat, is that I uh, accidentally didn't share the screen to the docs document that was created from the pundit annotations. But so uh, what I would do is basically export it. And um, if necessary, I could just copy the annotations to Word. I hope that, oh, by the way, Jonathan, thank you for uh, the note regarding um, Dostoevsky. Um, <laughs> I took a note and I will include it in my footnotes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we've got the word document. And then Lorena was asking, I'm really surprised that Pundit can work almost like a qualitative analysis software online because you can create relations between documents or even categories and concepts. Is that correct? Yes, is absolutely correct. And maybe, yeah, maybe we didn't provide a, uh, the context of uh, how Pandit started, what was originated, uh, was originated. 
we started working with Pandit as a tool for text analysis. And so the original concept of Pandit was to allow a research team in, in digital humanities to make a text analysis. And so the original idea was to allow to select parts of text and, and create semantic relations to uh they usually use it to connect it to places entities like places like um persons like bibliographic records and so on so this is the original concept of pandit and so to answer your question question lorena yes it's absolutely possible to create this relation and as we said as we are adding the possibility to plug virtually any type of vocabulary to be used as the object of the annotations, it's possible to, to create any type of uh, relation. So at the moment, Pandit is, we are, we are at Net7, we are mostly using Pandit still for that use case, so digital humanities. The Chrome extension is online and is usually used by users in many different ways, so it's freely usable, but there are probably some uh, use cases that we don't even uh, know, which could be in other domains or or other situations or other use case that we don't know that could could emerge in the in the next months and next years. So if you see any possibility to apply it, it also in other uh, domains, just let us know. We, we will be curious to, to know how, how to use it. Thanks, Giulio, for the answer. Uh, next question is from Nelly. Please interrupt me if someone want, wishes to answer to uh, the speakers, if I'm going too fast on the questions. Uh, next question is from Nelly. And Pandit only works on online materials, is that right? Not files on my computer that I open in the browser? Uh in general i mean the the general idea is to work on online materials okay but it, it works on, on your browser so if you open a local pdf file in your uh in, in your on your computer you open it on your browser you can use find it on that so it's possible to to do that uh, but then if probably you you move that pdf on another folder and another computer, maybe it could happen that you are losing your annotations. Uh, concerning PDFs, we are working to avoid that. So we would like to reach the point when you can annotate the same PDF on your local machine, online, on a website or, or another website, but we're still kind of in progress with that. I hope I answered the question. If you if you have uh, other related questions, just let me know. Thanks, Julio. I don't see anyone asking to talk. Okay, I'll move on to the next question then. Um, there was a comment from Sai, but it was about the registration. I remember when registering into into Pandit, saying I think it should read with EGI check in uh which was more a comment than a question i believe okay now, thank you we will if you want to then. now a question from lucia is it possible to annotate images or maps or printed music using pandit or is it just for text it's just for text at the moment uh we've been iterating in the past on that idea in, in the previous version of Pandit, then we start developing the new version, which is the one that we were showing today. At the moment, it's just text. I mean, could maybe if we find a nice use case and a nice project to make also in image annotations, why not? We could also do that. Or, or I mean, uh, we are going to release the, the code as public. So, I mean, if you also want to make a fork or a pull request, you are more than welcome to, to work with us. Thank you. 
Uh, we have thank you messages, bravo messages, very interesting webinar comments. And the next question from Julia, is it possible to add an annotation within another annotation? Uh, no, it's not possible. It was possible in the previous versions, uh, but with new version, with the, this new version, we decided to keep things a more simple. Also, somehow cutting some possibilities, which in the semantic web sometimes uh, seem like unlimited possibilities. But we decided to keep it very simple and to have a simple interface, simple user experience, also by limiting a little bit what, what is possible. If I can jump in, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please, Please do, Sana. So, Please. So, um, I just found out you may not be able to annotate within your annotation, but you can annotate your annotation, if that makes sense. So you can basically uh, go to your notebooks and then you can click on the, the pundit button and then you can annotate your annotations. So if that works for you, you may have a workaround. Perfect. Thank Perfect you. solution, Sona. I love it. Thanks to both. Um, okay, another question from Nele who asks, what does the report function do exactly? Um, I don't know if one of you wishes to answer. Uh, yeah, completely honest at the moment, nothing. Okay, Br brutally honest and uh, also, because we don't have that much traffic on Pandit, uh, we are planning to build a pipeline to at least receive an email if a mail if an annotation is reported. This is to avoid kind of harassment and things like that on, on, on the web from people using Pandit. So we need to build that workflow that at least send, send us an email and we maybe can go and check the report button and see what's going on and maybe delete the annotation if it's really kind of a, an harassment uh, case. And also the like and dislike buttons are just for a visual, um, a visual thing at the moment. Uh, but this could, this could also be something that in some cases can be used for, uh, for some specific things, you know. So, for example, when we were working on Europeana sounds, uh, we plan to have kind of a way of rating the annotation. So, maybe after a certain thumbs up, the annotations could be promoted, and maybe and instead of annotation become uh, I don't know an actual metadata of of, a, of an entity. So. This is all information that can also be used in specific projects in, in many different ways. Yes, thanks a lot. Uh, I can see we have many new questions. So your presentations definitely raise a lot of interest. Another question from Nele, can, annotation, can one annotation go into multiple no notebooks? Uh, no, this is not possible from a uh, data model perspective at the moment. Uh, do you want Nele provide some specific use case where this could be useful? Hello? Oh, yes, we hear you. Yes. Um, one moment, let me go back to that. Um... I, can't, I haven't tried to use Pundit very much yet, but uh, for example, I use Zotero a lot to annotate uh, documents right now. And I frequently put things in multiple folders for, because they are relevant for multiple, uh, for multiple projects. So that's, uh, that's why I was thinking if, if an annotation could go into multiple notebooks for multiple projects because it's relevant for multiple projects then that might be handy. Okay, makes sense. Thanks for, for sharing the, the use case. Uh, could be something that maybe we take into account for, for future development. So yeah, thanks for, for sharing the case. Thank you. Now, a question from Dove. Does, 
pundit semantic annotation include name and named entity recognition and linking to previously specified vocabularies? Uh, it doesn't provide uh, entity name recognition. Uh, in, in our previous version, there was an integration with the tool that allowed to do this thing. It wouldn't be impossible to, re, to recreate that uh, scenario. It, 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 in Pandi 2, there was this way to launch this command that was going through the, through the text, extracting all the entities belonging to the vocabulary, to the specified vocabulary, and the user could kind of review the annotation, accept or or uh, kind of refuse the annotation. So at the moment, we don't have it, but it's something that could be done in the future. Thanks, Julio, for the answer. Uh, next questions are from Jonathan. So Jonathan asked, so the annotation data all lives on your servers. I guess since that's where the URL to a particular annotation points, which means your terms of service will be very important. It's a uh, comment slash question. Yeah, the question I mean, being, uh, yeah, uh, it's it everything is on our servers, and uh, yeah, terms of service of course are very important. And um, what I can add on that. Uh, just a just bit, bit of a side note, we also have an endpoint which expose all the data in a standard W3C format for interoperability. And then there is the following question, which is very interesting. I, I can go to that. Uh, what happens if the page changes after you are notated? Does the annotation still work? Uh, this is the big enigma of web annotation and uh, in some cases the, if the page changes you 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 find you can still find the annotation in the same position uh, this 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 anchoring of the annotation to the to the text is a very complex uh, system which at the moment uses four different uh, strategies to to recognize the position of the uh, annotation and and so in general it, the system if the page it change is changing the system tries these four strategies to anchor the text to the current position and if not you find the annotations in the top of the page so sometimes it happens that you you don't find the annotation in the exact position and you find it on in the top right of of the page which is better than better than nothing this happens i mean if you go and make an annotation annotation on facebook home page it will you it, it's impossible to find it in the current position the next time you go in but also on the home page of newspapers for example it happens very often under the position because these pages are changing every every few minutes thanks a lot julio uh, the next question is from Nele. Uh, how can I make public notebooks? I'm not finding that for some reason. Uh, the notebooks are public by default. So whenever you create a new notebook, it is public. Okay, this is our, our decision to, to allow uh, annotations to be public. You can switch the, the notebook to a private notebook. You just have to click on the notebook icon top right. In the when you open the pandit sidebar, you see there is a little notebook icon. You click there and you see the button to switch it to private. But by default, it is public. Um, see, I don't think I'm, I'm seeing that. I'm, I made several new notebooks and they're all private by default. And um, I've been trying to make one public to test out like the social media uh, integration, and I'm not seeing any way to do that. I can show you my screen. Hold oh, yes, please. Uh, okay, maybe now. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, I hope you see my, I have two screens. I hope you see the, the right one. Uh, let me open, I don't know, page. Uh, so you open Pandit here. You mm -hmm. see that? Yes. And you you see this icon here? Ah, uh, yes. I just tried it on Chrome instead of on Vivaldi, and I, there I can see it, yes. Yeah, here you have your current notebook. So this is the notebook where you are mm -hmm. adding your annotations to, mm -hmm. and you can switch. You see it's public by default, and you can switch it to private. Yes. Yeah, thank you. I can see it in Chrome now. I was using Vivaldi before, which is a Chrome-based browser, but apparently not entirely the same. <laughs> thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Julia, for the demonstration. Uh, can I move on? Yeah. Yeah. So nice webinar, well presented. Congratulations. You have a few questions which were answered by Ducho. I think uh, participants Thanks. have had the time to read them. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you, Ducho. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, Agnieszka said, I admit Pandit has a very nice flow of using it. Thanks. And now a question from Sai. What are the features that are, yes, what are the features that are in the works that you're the most excited about? Uh, as I already mentioned, there are two things that we are working at the moment, which are something that was uh, requested since a long time. One is for semantic annotations to allow the possibility to plug different vocabularies and to use different vocabularies as objects and which might open some possibility to other use cases. For example, some years ago, we were uh, talking to some, uh, some uh, teams in the US that were working in um, some, something uh, medical uh, domain and we made a demo adding a specific uh, vocabulary in the medical domain. And so this is something that is really expected to give the possibility to teams to plug their own vocabularies uh, for objects, but also for predicates and also to give the possibility to build their own vocabularies by adding uh, items manually. So this is one thing which is also very useful for the digital humanities uh, domain. And the second thing is to allow users to work on shared, uh, shared uh, notebooks, which is the same thing that we usually do on Google Docs. Maybe we open a Google document and we share it to a team of few people. We want to allow, allow people to do the same thing with notebooks. So I create a notebook, I make annotations, and we work together on the annotations on that notebook. So these are the two most uh, exciting things we're working on at the moment. Nice, that sounds interesting. Thanks, Julio. And um, there was a question from Enrico who asked if Pandit works only on Chrome. And... Uh, at the moment, yes, with the Chrome extension, which is the highly recommended way of using it, yes. Um, you see in the document I shared that there are also the two other ways that you can use it. One is Feed the Pandit, and you can use Feed the Pandit also outside Chrome. Uh, so you can also use that way, which even if it's not uh, really recommended. And with the WordPress plugin, once you use the WordPress plugin on your website, you don't need Chrome. So you can use it also uh, with other browsers. So the Chrome extension is only for Chrome. The two other ways are open also to other browsers. That was clear, thank you. And I see also Lorena in the chat had uh, said she, it worked with her with the Chrome install extension. Now, uh, Nelly, I had uh, a workflow issue for you. Uh, I don't know if you've read it already. Should I read it out anyway? My materials are mostly PDFs and web pages. Zotero can directly annotate PDFs in a way I like, but not items in HTML format. 
pundits seems great for annotating web pages and online PDFs, but doesn't work with PDFs that are saved on the computer and then opened in the browser. Is there some way of integrating these that I'm missing? Thank you. Uh, this is related to the previous question. Uh, mm. In general, uh, in general, Pandit starts as a web annotation tool. So, as said, it 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 started as an idea to annotate things on the web. But as we said before, you can also kind of open a PDF locally on your computer uh, in the browser, and you can annotate that. But it's not recommended because then if you move the document. And you 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 risk of losing all the annotations. We are currently working understanding if there if we can kind of use some unique code or unique identifier in PDFs to allow to annotate the same PDF in different pages locally or different web pages and still keep the annotations anchored to that single PDF. Nelly, I see you have uh, your hand raised, please. Um, yes, uh, sorry, I did, I did try this one in Chrome for sure, and uh, I tried opening a PDF from locally, and I'm getting a missing PDF file error. Okay. Uh, maybe I should send that to you? Um, I don't know, maybe we can check it out uh, later. Do you want to drop me an email? Yes, you for sure. Check it? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, I also share you my email here. I can also check it with the, the, the team, the, the Pandit team, and so we, we can tell you. Great, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, the next question from Simon was, is there an API one could interact with to download its own annotations or public annotations? And if I'm not wrong, I think Ducho had uh, answered that there's a public API from which you can access your annotations in W3C compliant format or JSON LD. If this is a, uh, I think uh, the, it was answered, is it clear enough? Did you want to add something, Julio? Uh, yes, there is the, the end point that I was showing, which is actually just related to your notebook. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is also an endpoint which exposes the all the annotations in in the standard in the same standard format actually, and you can query that to also to get all your annotations and in, in yeah in standard format and do whatever you want with those. Great, thanks. Um, have to move on a bit quicker because I see it's already fifteen twenty. So, and I see we still have a few questions. So thanks, Julio. Okay. Can you do Sparkle queries on the triples? Asked Robert. Um, this is a bit beyond my knowledge, a bit too technical for me, but I think probably the previous uh, answer was answering that. So there is an endpoint which exposes the data in uh, the standard format. Uh, so you can query all the um, public annotations and your own annotations on triple. So I, I think the, the answer is yes. I think Lucho is answering no. Uh, probably it's not Sparkle, but you can in any way uh, query the, the API, the, end, the public endpoint of uh, GoTriple. Okay, so GoTriple Go has its own internal system of communication between the back end and front end, which is something we made to optimize the, the, the communication between the, the two. And then we created a dedicated endpoint to be compliant with the W3C. Uh, standard uh, guidelines and another thing we would like to build in the in the future is to build the integration and interoperability with the hypothesis.org uh, annotation tool okay thanks julio uh, i can see a few of the comments are comments not questions so i'll move forward 
Jonathan was asking if the code is open source. Yeah, Lucio. To which Duccio, so th thank you, Duccio, for thing. answering. Thank you, Duccio. Yes, uh, yes, will be open, open source on GitHub, and it's uh, how to say that it is something that we wrote in the last months uh, with uh, recent technologies. It's based on Angular, latest version of Angular, and so you are welcome to fork it or. Uh, uh, make uh, pull requests and is issues if you want. I mean, we are open to collaborate with everybody who wants to use it. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to know if someone wants to ask a last question. If, if no one shows up, then I can ask you to move quickly to menti.com. I'll send you the link. And so we can finish the training. I'd like to thank a lot the speakers today uh, who did a great presentation and also the participants for bringing so many questions to the chat and making this a lively discussion, let's say. So thank you very much. Now, if you'd like to go here, I'll share my screen again. There you go. Okay, so please go to menti.com with the code that I wrote in the chat, if you don't mind. And I will share my presentation here. Okay. So let's see if a few people have connected, right? Yes, two answers, four answers. I'll just wait for a few seconds. So the first question is, I enjoyed the training session. It's a very short survey. It's only five questions. So if you don't mind remaining. Okay, I can see nine. Let's wait a few more seconds. I didn't have many doubts that this question would get 100%. I strongly agree answers given the, the session today. Okay. I'll move on to the next one. The training session met my expectations. Okay. Thanks for your answers. And let's move on to the next one. In the session, I felt empowered to sh share my own ideas and ask questions. Here we go. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. The topic today was relevant to my work. I see you have many positive answers today. Many, many. It was a very good uh, practical session. I enjoyed it as well. I guess the participants too. And I'll move on to the last question. I am interested in being informed of the coming sessions. Uh, even if I have to precise that the triple open science series are nearly coming to an end and that all of the training materials of the past training series are available on the project website on the events page and the recordings on the YouTube project channel. Thank you very much to everyone. I think if we have no more comments in the chat, only compliments, I think we can close the session. Yes, thank you very much, everyone. And I'd like to say bye-bye. Thank you to the speakers and hopefully see you on the 21st of June for the training on copyright in academia. Goodbye. Ciao. Goodbye. Thank you.